Hello, today I'm going to recover some dirty sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid here used as, is used as a catalyst preparation of diacetyl ether. So I add water to convert acetyl sulfate to acetyl and acid. The liquid I'm distilling here is a mixture of acetyl, water, acid, carbon, etc. Okay, let's start. You need to add some boiling stone to prevent bulking. Because usually the mixture of sulfuric acid and water is likely to overheat it and there will be a hazard. Okay, the liquid I'm distilling here is the mixture of ethanol and water. Because the, the length of the fractional column is not able to separate ethanol and water efficient and you will see the the liquid I'm collecting is milky because some organic compound is being stilled over along with the water okay let's uh, change the receiving flask because the temperature is, is almost reached the boiling point of water almost 100 degree and uh, my trust thermometer is not very accurate and there is more and more smoke appears in the distilling flask this time the sulfuric acid is uh, much more concentrated than before and I decided to pour it in another smaller flask to, to keep separating and don't forget to really add the boiling stone okay it forms again remove the solid stuff may solve this problem so let's do it we are filtering hot sulfuric acid Thus, we cannot use paper filter or the acid will eat it. It's like poop. <laughs> and we got a large lump of carbon. That's crazy. At least a small amount of organic stuff still mixed with the acid. So you can add some sodium persulfate or hydrogen peroxide to prevent sulfuric acid loss and sulfur dioxide releasing. I didn't do that and huge amount of sulfur dioxide gas was being generated. Some potassium permanganate solution was added to the receiving flask. Shake it and we found out the solution become colorless. Hmm. Smoke started to appear in the distilling flask. Again, some permanganate solution was added along with the inside surface of the receiving flask. The solution goes from purple, red, brown, and colorless. This due to the sulfur dioxide gas in the container. I covered the distilling flask with a luminous silicate blanket and its inside start to clear up after some time. Now we get almost the easier troop of mixture of sulfuric acid and water, 98%. It's time to distill the sulfuric acid. Set up a simple distillation apparatus. Due to the high boiling point of sulfuric acid, I decided not to run water through the condenser to avoid the joint cracking. Of course the water, water will boil then the latent energy of the water to vapor can remove the heat from sulfuric acid vapor then condense it and we can get hot sulfuric acid in the receiving flask, receiving flask which is placed in the water bath let's start heating more and more fumes start to appear in the flask now you see the acid start to boil also using aluminum silicate blanket to keep the acid vapor moving forward. Now the sulfuric acid is coming off. 
We will see how this condenser works soon later. Here we go. Looks like this works fine. And this is where all the acid vapor being condensed. As more and more water is boiling off, we can now add more water from the tube on the left. Just like this. Simple. It's doing a good job. Let's have a look at our receiving flask. Look at this. Interesting sulfuric acid droplets. Mm. Now the distillation is over. We left some brown goo inside the distilling flask. Who knows what, what the hell is this? I'm afraid of having a hard time to separate the apparatus after it cools down. So, separate it when it's hot. Be careful when doing this. Lots of irritating smoke is going to be generated. So, for our product, we get about 96% clean sulfuric acid. Well, this is still more amount of water than the A0 percentage due to some reasons. But this concentration is enough for me. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want.